Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden coming to you from Malmö, Sweden. And I've been here for a few weeks now and I want to give you my first, second and third impressions. Not of Sweden so much, but of Malmö because I really haven't seen much of Sweden yet. It's a very big country and Malmö is near the southern tip just across the bridge from Copenhagen, Denmark. So, Malmö third largest city in Sweden with a little over 300,000 people, but it looks like that is changing very quickly. It seems that the entire city is under construction. They are building everywhere. So this city is going to probably double in size in the next 10 years. And it's very cosmopolitan. It's a very diverse population here, and yet still has a Swedish feel to it. Whatever that means. I don't even know what a Swedish feel is, but it feels Swedish. Anyway, I like it here. Um, it's relaxed. It's like the best of America without a lot of the bad parts. And it's old, it's new, it's pretty chill. People seem to just go about their own business and they're pleasant. Uh, I've run all over the city now for over two weeks just wandering without a map, not knowing where I am, and then trying to find my way back here. And I felt safe in every neighborhood that I've run in. Uh, it seems like a very, very safe city. And it's just pleasant. The most dangerous thing in Malmö, I must say, bicycles. They're everywhere. There are more bikes here than cars. So you have to be really careful if you're running or walking as a stupid American tourist because you're likely to walk into oncoming bike traffic without even realizing it because you can't hear them. They're everywhere. There, I would guess, more people on bikes than cars. And I don't know if it's like that year round, but it's summer here and everybody's biking. There are bigger bike parking lots, it seems, than car parking lots for most of the venues in the downtown area of Malmo. Also, there's a lot of people on electric or battery powered scooters and they go a lot faster than the bikes, so you have to be careful of those too. But with that said, there are bike paths and walking paths next to them everywhere. The whole city is lined with a network of bike and walking paths. Even out to the big shopping malls, you can bike, walk, run, rollerblade, or scoot pretty much anywhere you want to go. There's a network of bike paths that are going to take you there, which I think is incredible. So big thumbs up to the bike culture here in Malmö. And as far as running goes, again, you have endless opportunities on these bike paths, but there are parks everywhere throughout the city, and most of them are planted with old beech trees, which I'm guessing, they're a little different than the beech trees in Vermont, but I'm guessing they're about 150 years old. They're big. They're probably three or four feet in diameter at the base, so over a meter, and I'd say 80 to 90 feet tall, and they're just stunning. So when you're running through the parks, you have these tall, giant, like elephant legs going up, these smooth gray towers all around you, and the canopy is so high above you, and it's just really, really beautiful. There are no squirrels here. That's something that uh, is rather fascinating to me. We've seen one squirrel so far, yeah, one. No, we saw two. It, one was dead. <laughs> but we saw another one, and it was a red squirrel, but it didn't really have hair on it, except for its tail. Um, but what they do have instead of squirrels? Rabbits! Oh my god, rabbits are everywhere. You can't run through a park without seeing probably 200 rabbits. And I saw my first hedgehog ever last night on a run at the beach. <laughs> I'll put the hedgehog video at the end of this. They're so cute. So, food. It is so easy to be vegan in Malmö. Uh, the term they use here is vegansk. So, if you pick up a package, look for the word vegansk. And most stores and restaurants are going to have a vegansk option. Uh, I am Amerikansk, by the way. <laughs> so, uh... And the food is cheap. I can't believe how inexpensive it is here compared to the U.S. dollar. I know the Swedish krona is low right now, 
Um, so if it was back up to where it was historically, food would be more expensive. But right now, it is dirt cheap to eat. So uh, one of my favorite things here is uh, red beet hummus. Eating a lot of red beet hummus <laughs> with spinach and grated carrots and grated uh, red cabbage. Yum! Anyway, food, cheap, and good falafel. Lots of falafel and some really good vegan falafel around the city. So I am not starving. What else about Momo? The architecture. There are some really extraordinary old buildings. And when I say old, they look super old, like what most Americans think of when they think of European architecture. But most of them were built in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, Sweden was spared. Uh, from bombing in World War II, so the old architecture is still here, but still, most of it is not that old. Uh, we did see a church in Lund that I think was built in the 1100s. That was pretty cool. But uh, Mama is a mix. You've got the old buildings, you've got the historic downtown and all the canals, and then you've got these new skyscraper cities that they're building out on the, I think it's called West Harbor. Uh, where the turning torso is. Uh, I'll put a picture of the turning torso in here so you can see it. It's the tallest building in Scandinavia, a little over 600 feet tall, and it kind of spirals up into the air. And then it's all new construction out there. Um, huge, huge development. So you've got a mix of super modern, you've got a mix of really old, and then you've got a mix of in-between boxy, really hideous architecture, which uh, I saw a lot of in Budapest due to the Soviet influence, and I see in the United States as well, because in the 60s and 70s, people just went postmodernist and buildings got ugly. So you have these really stunning buildings with a new addition added onto them, and it's like the architect of the new addition was saying, F you, when they built the new structure. But still, it's a beautiful city. Uh, there is so much beauty here, and I'm taking probably 200 photographs a day. So <clears throat> the people are super nice. They speak English phenomenally well. And the odd thing is that when Swedes speak English to you, they speak it almost with an American accent. It's really hard to hear their accent, but they pronounce Swedish places as an American would. For instance, uh, Gothenburg, or Gothenburg, which is the second largest city in Sweden, I grew up calling it Gothenburg, and then it became Gothenburg. The Swedes pronounce it Jotunberry, and I think that's probably butchering it a bit, but the G is a Y, and the G at the end is another Y, so it's like Jotunberry. Um, but when a Swede tells you about Gothenburg, they will say Gothenburg. They don't say Jotunberry or blueberry, or whatever berry. Uh, in fact, Sweden, the way they spell it, it looks like Sverige. <laughs> but they pronounce it Sveria. So the G at the end is ya, Sveria. Uh, but it's just amazing to me that when speeds, speeds? Yeah, they are really fast. A lot of fast bikers, skiers, and runners around here. So Swedes, speedy or not, uh, I think it's just really cool how they adopt the American pronunciation when speaking to you in English. And they also do this with people's names. Uh, for instance, their own name. They'll tell you their name using the American or English pronunciation and not the way they would pronounce it themselves. So, very accommodating culture. Uh, very generous in their ways. Uh, I've been told that they're like that with Americans, not so much with each other. Swedes are rather reserved with each other, but they seem to be very friendly and open and curious about Americans, so, yeah. What else? Um, there was something, oh, uh, beautiful beaches, really, really beautiful beaches, and the beach communities remind me of Los Angeles. It's kind of strange. The runs I've done along the beach and in the nicer neighborhoods at the beach, you could be in Santa Monica, you could be in Beverly Hills, or the Pacific Palisades of Los Angeles. Uh, it's got a very LA feel to it too, and everybody's on bikes, and there's a long bike path, and 
and the beaches are nice, beautiful sand. The water has a nice, clean, bluish color to it. The difference is that there are all kinds of swimming piers. Like you go out on a pier and then there are ladders going down into the water and there's a ton of people swimming. There are a lot of people in the ocean here. And that's pretty cool. Um, no waves here in Malmö because Denmark is just right across the, the sound and it's not very wide. You can see Copenhagen from the beach in Malmö. Many of the Swedes I'm talking to are telling me that it's rather hot. And I think it's been getting up to 30 Celsius, which might be 80 degrees, maybe 82, 83 degrees, I'm going to guess. And it's very uh, dry air. It's not humid at all. And the Swedes are telling me it's super hot. And this is nothing compared to a Vermont summer, and Vermont summers aren't hot. <laughs> so their summers appear to be very, very mild. Uh, and oh my god, I'm filming this video at 10 p.m. at night and it's still super light out. It doesn't really start to get dark until maybe 11.15. So the sun goes down at around 9.45, but then it stays light for a really long time because the sun really isn't going that far below the horizon this time of year. Um, and the sun come up, comes up pretty early in the morning as well, so that's kind of neat to experience. Not a full white night, but I'm often running on the beach after 10 o'clock, and it's perfectly light out, so super cool. Stay tuned. Lots of Swedish videos coming your way. I've been filming a ton, too much in fact, so that's why I haven't been posting videos, because I'm just inundated with content. Oh, even better! So... This week is the Swedish Masters competition, which has nothing to do with one's age. It's all about, like, the national championships. That's what Masters means, I guess. So they're having Swedish championships in all these different sports. And today I filmed the tricking competition, which is kind of like a mix of a breakdance battle with martial arts and gymnastics. So the two guys will come up and they'll do a move and flip and then... The other guy has to beat it, and it's judged. So I filmed the National Swedish Tricking Championships. And I thought I saw Derek Mueller of Veritasium in the audience. And I'm pretty sure he was a professor somewhere here in Sweden, maybe Lund, which is like 10 kilometers away. Uh, so I was watching him the whole time that the shooting was going on, the tricking. And his mannerisms, the way he used his hands, the way he laughed, the way he smiled. I'm like, oh my God, it's Derek Mueller. i got to go say hi. It's Veritasium. And then I approached him afterwards, and the closer I got, I'm like, oh my God, it is Derek Mueller. But then I said, Derek, and he just looked at me, and in a very strange accent, who, who are you talking? Derek Mueller? No, don't know him. So I thought he might have been faking, but he wasn't, because I looked at Derek's latest Veritasium video, and Veritasium. And his hair is rather short. This looked like a kind of bushy Derek Mueller, but he's got an identical twin. I wonder if he knows that. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. More videos coming. I'm going to post the Swedish National Tricking Competition tomorrow. And I got to say, I'm loving Malma. Not Malmo, but Malma. <laughs> All right. See you soon. Bye. How do you say it? Jotenbori? Jotenbori. Jotenbori. Like in Italian, yo te bori. <laughs> yo te bori. <laughs> yo te bori. Hey, Hedgy. What you doing, little hedgehog? What you doing, hedgehog? Are you hiding? You're hiding, aren't you?
It's okay.